This is Hypixel Housing, and it hasn't had an update in almost a year now. So I took it upon myself to update it. All right, so I took a computer science class in my school last year, and that's based off the programming language Java. Want to know what else is written in Java? Because I'm an absolute pro in Java now, I can create Minecraft plugins for servers. Want to know what server uses Minecraft plugins? I think you get the idea, right? So I decided to start remaking Hypixel Housing on a private test server, and despite it being far from complete, I'd like to showcase the progress that I've made so far. With this, I'm starting a series where I recreate Hypixel Housing in full, but with some features and ideas we all wish that housing had. Who knows, maybe I'll open it up for you guys to mess around with, but no promises. First, I started how everyone else starts and created a new project in IntelliJ. I knew I wanted to start by the creation and setup of houses. The way Hypixel does this is by dynamically creating a new server for each time you want to join or create a house. Originally, I was going to do this, but after looking into it more, uh... Instead, I had houses saved as a different world on one server. This might be bad for performance in the future, but that's something for later to figure out. Alright, so I started off by allowing the player to create their house, which on the server side creates a new void world, assigns it a random UUID, and makes a small platform for the user to stand on. After this, I started the setup of the housing menu, a key component in the customization of a house and arguably one of the most recognizable parts of housing. For this, I individually added each item to the menu, and by individually adding each item, I mean asking ChatGibbity to do it for me because I couldn't be bothered. So the base of housing was pretty much done. With this, I had the ability to go back to the hub, or in this case right now, the main world, which is also just a vanilla world for the moment, along with deleting your house, setting the name, which doesn't do much at the moment, as well as visiting another user's house, though I guess I don't actually know if this works because no one's here to test it with me. I like that I made the housing menu first because with this, I have a nice list of features that I need to add. I could have done something boring like the visibility or collections, but no, I went right into systems and more specifically event actions. Event actions lets you run actions, you'll never guess, um, based on the specific events that happen. There's events in here like player join, player kill, or even player twerk. And when any of them happen, you can run code. Or in housing, it's called actions. Each event has its own place for the user to add actions, but we actually need actions to add actions. I started off by creating the chat action, which allows the user to specify a message to be sent to the player. After a lot of messing around, I got it working. Due to the way I set it up though, I'm able to create other actions in a very simple way. I created one for sending an action bar, killing a player, resetting a player's inventory, and sending a title. Now before we continue, I want to take note of the send title action. The way it works in housing is fine, but because I'm doing this all custom and from scratch, I can change things. For starters, I fancied up the menu that goes with editing the action to make the properties match what you're actually editing. The first major change you'll notice is that the fade in, stay, and fade out times works in ticks instead of seconds. This allows for more precise times, which is the first major improvement I've made when recreating housing. Along with this, I've created an event for block place, player attack, and I've created a new action that I've actually wanted personally for a while, which pushes the player in a specified direction. However, I was having trouble thinking of an idea for what to call this action. I was thinking of just push player, but it seemed too simple. So I called up some of my friends at Home Depot to help me give it an idea. Thank you for calling the Home Depot. This call may be recorded or oh, yes. used by Home Depot and its authorized mm. vendors. Tell me how I can help. High pixel housing ideas. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you repeat that? <clears throat> High pixel housing ID. Thank you, Alex. Would you happen to have an order number I may assist you with? No, I just had a I just had a question if you don't mind. Sure. Um I'm setting up when you think of pushing someone, what word do you think of? Like like fling or push or Pushing? Yeah, like if you um... Yeah, kind of a hard question. If, like, for the house. like if you're pushing someone, do you think of like, like for high pixel housing, like, do you push or do you fling or do you throw? Um, how about propel? For what? Propel. Propel, like propel forward. Oh, propel. Forward. Okay, I, you know, you know what? I'm gonna use that. Thank you. 
I didn't want to end this video with something this simple, and while it did take five days to get to the point where I'm at now, I wanted to add one final feature. Stats. You can use the change player stat action to edit the properties of a stat. And here we have our first minigame created in my custom version of housing. What I thought was interesting is the way I documented my progress while working on it. So during study hall periods at school when I had nothing to do, I would continue to work on the project and use GitHub to share the project back and forth. In GitHub, you can set a comment or a note, whatever, when you're uh, pushing like the updated files, right? And looking over them again, I'm noticing some interesting comments. Okay, so starting off, we have the initial commit, then we have study hall work, and then study hall update again. And then we have W progress, which has a description. I don't remember. Okay, good to know. The next day, study hall again, GG, and then added kill event, which I think is the only one where I actually specify what I did. After that, we have study hall again. Um, fix fixed action settings. I don't remember what that is, but it does have a description, so maybe it goes into more detail. Nope, it just says took me too long. Then we have this one, which don't put action info in the item lore, it crashes. Uh, good to know, I guess. Um, then we have some events. I don't even remember. And literally so much, I don't even remember. Good to know. With that, I'm going to end the first episode of the series here. The next episode will come out whenever I decide to click the upload button again. Let me know what you would like to see added and if I should open this up at some point. Thanks for watching.